Mm, oh, this trailer. Whatever, Whatever shall, shall we, we do, do with you? you? New Venom trailer out, and I have um, said a lot of not particularly nice or positive or enthusiastic things about this movie over the last year, year and a half or so. Um, broad strokes, I'll just reiterate this off the bat. Um, making a Venom solo movie without first establishing him in Spider-Man is not a particularly good idea. Making a Venom origin solo movie with no clear ties to Spider-Man whatsoever is definitely a very bad idea. That having been said, when the announcement came in that this was gonna be hard R and was gonna be horror tinged, I actually, since that announcement, I've had a tiny bit of hope, not a ton, it's basically, it, I actually, I want to revise that. It's not even hope, but I can see the one possible way this might actually work. I actually don't have any faith that Sony will get it there. But what I've said is if you're going to not tie this to Spider-Man and if you are going to go R-rated, then horror is a decent way to go because you can do possession tropes. You can do body horror and like do it properly, like really dig into what it is that's happening to him and his body and the fact that he's sharing a mind almost with this thing. You could really get unnerving. And again, no faith that that's what Sony will pull off, but that is the sliver of maybe there's a way for this to work that I've been clinging to for a while now. Because look, I like Venom. I like Venom as a character. I'm not gonna go so far as to say he's a good character because, you know, I fell in love with the character when I was 10. And as a 10 year old, I had no taste, but I've, I've still got affection for the guy. So I, I would like this to succeed. But the, the, the whole premise is initially flawed. But let's talk about this trailer specifically. So having said that this is a bad idea, there's a surprising amount in this trailer that I either like or I'm like, that works well enough. So like a big thing that I like, I love the voice of the symbiote of Venom. I love that voice a lot. Now, I'm, I'll admit I'm kind of a sucker for just really deep voices. I like them um, just as a thing. But, you know, I, I, I don't know um, who's doing the voice. Or, I mean, for, for all I know, it's Tom Hardy just with a heck of a lot of reverb and pitch down added to it. But whoever it is, instead of just going generic, growly, deep voice, which is is what you get sometimes. They do appear, there's some, there's some personality behind that, which is, get, I love. I mean, I I could listen all day to people like James Earl Jones, Tony Todd, Keith David, especially. So I that was a big thing for me. And having heard that voice, having heard the symbiote's voice, the sort of, Mike Tyson-esque kind of soft-spoken almost lisp that Tom Hardy has going suddenly makes more sense because it becomes a point of contrast because he is very soft-spoken. And um, we do now have confirmation that uh, he is. we are keeping his reporter backstory. Um, and it looks like that is gonna be a factor in this. That's, what a, that's what's gonna put him on the radar of what looks like our nominal villain. I'll get to him in a second. And I think that's a decent angle. Um, because, you know, we, if we're not going to have Spider-Man, we, we really need to give him some kind of grounding him something. And if we make him a reporter, especially a reporter with a conscience, which he seems to be, seems to be, if not successfully, at least trying to be kind of the crusading reporter thing. And if he's going for that, then that, okay, that's a good start. That's a good basis. Now, I mentioned the villain. Uh, and when I say the villain, I mean this generic big pharma business guy you know I, and he, he seems fine 
I'm sure he'll be fine. He'll be functional. He'll be as functional as, say, Darren Cross from Ant-Man or, heck, about as functional as Francis from Deadpool. But, again, stopping and thinking about it, okay, removing Spider-Man from Venom's origin is a stupid idea. But if you're going to do it, having a villain who is involved in the creation of Venom um, and who can serve as a focal point for the hatred from both Eddie and the symbiote to zero in on him. Because if you remove Peter Parker, I think it's, it's really central to Venom that he is driven to a certain degree by hate, or at least that's, that's a big part of how the symbiote manipulates him to do what it wants to do, is through his hatred. So if you give him a proper target for his hate, like I expect this guy will be, that, not fully, but to a degree, does fill the void left by the absence of Peter Parker. So, okay, I don't expect this guy to be a particularly great villain, but that's functional, narratively, that works. Um, there are some cool little moments, like uh, him, you know, just spotting the woman who was, uh, you know, obviously trying to follow him. And he's like, you, you suck at this. And so that's cool. And then, you know, we get, you know, we get into it and the action looks okay. It varies from shot to shot. Some of it looks a little better than others. But honestly, for the most part, it looks pretty good not awesome but pretty good so i'm looking at the various components of this thing and i'm thinking to myself okay there's a couple of things i genuinely like i now have context for some of the stuff that made me concerned before so i'm not as concerned a lot of the other stuff i'm seeing is you know it's gonna be fine it's not gonna be a detriment the few things that aren't very good like the tagline embrace your inner anti-hero that's not a phrase that's stupid it's embrace your inner demon why isn't it your inner demon like but ah but that's a marketing fault that's not necessarily the fault of the film so fine pass on that the the whole him like flying off the motorcycle and the tendrils go out and pull him back on the motorcycle that's dumb and it doesn't look very good it may not be a completely finished effect but it's also not a great notion but that's a quick moment i expect it'll be a fairly quick moment in the film as well so okay i won't hold that against it so so far i've got stuff that i like stuff that works well enough and even the stuff that doesn't work i doesn't make me doesn't strike me as an indicator that it, it would sink the whole movie the few things that i'm going okay that doesn't work so getting towards the end of the trailer all this thing has to do to get me on board and actually maybe start getting excited is nail the creature itself. Oh, that's a shame. I mean, I, I'm exaggerating a little bit for for comedic effect there. I, it's it's all right. It's not quite there. It's close though. It's in the ballpark. It, I mean, first of all, look, fair's fair. This is miles better than what he looked like in Spider-Man 3. Not even a comparison. I like how much emphasis there is on the teeth. That, you know, as the thing's coming over and closing his head, like your eyes, well, your eyes zoom in on whatever uh, is, isn't black because the black is enveloping. And so it's just these teeth all coming together. Like that, that's... That is a good way to, to do Venom and to get the proper emphasis. That was always my big thing with Spider-Man 3. It, like, he it, it just kind of gave him jaggedy vampire kind of teeth. Like, no, it needs to be, like, either huge or more teeth than is reasonable or makes any sense, or both. And this went for both. So that's cool. The the tongue... I mean, it's true to the comic. He, he always kind of had, like, a... Um, a tentacle, tendril, tubular uh, kind of tubular man uh, kind of tongue. Um, so it's true to that, but I don't know. It's not. It's not quite working for me. I mean, maybe it's. It's again. Maybe it's the effect is missing, like a, a little last last polish on it, because it's it doesn't look attached within his within his mouth. So that's not quite there for me. Uh, but even though it's like two words that come out of that thing's mouth after it fully forms, I do like hearing that voice come out of it. So 
it didn't nail the look for me. It's not like, yes, but I'm also kind of going, okay. I, mean, I think maybe part of the thing, my, my friend Paul pointed this out, it might have worked better if there was less definition. Like basically in anything that isn't the eyes and the teeth, if it was more of a black void um, everywhere else, as opposed to being kind of shiny, glistening -y and, you know, almost seeming to have a texture. Um, that might have been a better way to go. But oddly enough, at the end of this trailer, I find myself going, I can't write this movie off. Again, I want to emphasize, I don't have hope that this is going to be good. But that path, that incredibly narrow, like, pinpoint size path that I said I could, I could see being the path to being a good movie, I can still see it. Like, I, the, the things that I see here, nothing obliterates the possibility of being able to walk that line. So, maybe, which is weird. Again, acknowledging that it's possible for it to be decent is not the same as saying it will be good. But I would have expected by now to have seen something that would have made me go, yep, yeah, there's my confirmation. I know for certain that this is going to be awful. And I don't have it yet. Like, I, I I had it, like, by this time, um, you know, uh, sort of second trailer area, I had my confirmation for, say, Ghost in the Shell, that I knew I was going to hate it. Or, um, you know, something like Justice League, second trailer, I'm like, this is not good. And even though Justice League was better than I thought it was, than I thought it was going to be, it still wasn't great. So... But I, I'm looking at this this trailer and it's better. It, I'm, I'm right now in a better place thinking to myself than either of those two examples, you know, where I was prepared to write it off. I, I thought this trailer was gonna be like, cool, this is where I get to write off this movie and I can't, which surprises me. I will be very curious to see how this plays out. What are your thoughts on the new Venom trailer? Does it give you hope? Does it look like something that could work for you? Do you think it looks like complete and utter crap and I am just being weirdly optimistic and giving this thing a benefit of the doubt, you know, enough rope to hang itself with because I have an affection for the character? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. There's all the stuff to do, such as support me on Patreon, follow me on Twitter, listen to my podcast, etc., etc., etc. So until next time, this council is adjourned.